Hello everyone. Um, long time no see. It's a Sunday afternoon. I'm still in my pajamas. If you hear voices, it, my husband is having a meeting. That's what it is. So I thought this was the perfect time. I have my library all set up downstairs. All the books are here. I have redone my TBR list, which is more books than I would like. But what better way to chip away at that list than re, I was going to say reinvigorate, that's not right, reintroduce, restart this little series I want to do where I plug in that random number generator and we pick some books. I wrote this all up last night, this morning I wrote down, oh god, I wrote down if there are audiobooks. Let's just do it. Most of my TBR is right here behind me. So hopefully, you know, if I get a certain number, I can just grab it. There are some downstairs though. So we're going to stick to my original concept, which is where I uh, pull five and pick three because we love having options, right? So I have 135 books on my TBR. That is pretty bad. I want to definitely get that down this year, make a large effort <laughs> on tackling this. I think it would be great. I think there's about 80 on the shelf behind me. I think if I just got it down to where I just always had this shelf and there were none downstairs, I think that would be the perfect like immediate, like middle ground, I guess that'd be a really good Number. I mean, that's still a lot. That's probably more than I would like, but at least it would all be on this one shelf. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, so let's do it. One through 135. Let's go. 122. Well, shoot. That one's definitely going to be downstairs because the I went downstairs last when I was making this list up. 122 is the Very Secret Society of Irregular Witches by San San Gu Sanju. Madonna, Mandana. I will, I mean, if I don't pick it, I won't grab it, but that's pick number one. Let's, let's try and lock that in my brain. <laughs> Next, so pick number two, 71. I think that will be up here. 71, this could be near the back though. Oh, okay, this, that's good. That's a good pick. That's right here. The Last Book Party by Karen Dukas. I didn't say what, okay, the first one, the Secret Society of Regular Riches. A friend got me that book, so I don't totally know what it's about. I've I've heard it compared to that T.J. Klum book, House of the Cerulean Sea, which I did like. It's like a rom com, but also a like just feel good story. Like this woman who's a witch, like goes to this orphanage to take care of kids. I think, or maybe I'm just combining that with House of the Cerulean Sea. But anyway, that's what that's about. This is a book my grandmother gave me for Christmas, I think two years ago. I think it was originally her copy. I don't know if she purchased it for me, but she still gave it to me. So the thought still counts. I don't know what it's about, but it's very short. Let me read this for you. This girl like gets a job with a famous author that she likes. So I don't know, my grandmother liked it. Usually I like the books she likes. She likes a lot of like literary books which I can, I enjoy going one of those every once in a while. And this is one of the ones I found this morning that does have an audiobook and it's like five hours or something. It's super short. That's definitely an option. Three more. Next is 76. I got to show you so you know I'm not lying to you. 76 might be downstairs. I think that might be just past the cutoff. Nope, it's right here. God Killer by Hannah Kaner. This is a book about like a girl who hunts gods. I've heard very mixed things. I got this for Christmas this year. I was really excited about it. It sounded super good and something that was right in my alley, but now I've heard mixed things and I'm nervous, but I still really want to read it. And uh, this is another one that has an audiobook. So that's really good for me. And the Regular Riches one has an audiobook. So that just, that means we're going to have more success in this video because I generally get through audiobooks faster because I can do them while doing chores or driving, you know, the, the whole deal. All right, that's four, right? No, that's three. God, so two more. 
11. Oh, that's going to be right at the top. 11. Oh, I don't know about that, guys. I don't know about that. I don't think that's happening. That is this book, uh, Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. I got this off Thrift Books, which is why it looks like a library copy. <laughs> um, but I could not find this literally anywhere else. Like, I don't think I, or maybe it's on Amazon, but I got a really good deal for it on Thrift Books. Again, I forget what this is about, but it's some adult fantasy that really interested me. Let me read this again for you. Oh, the little tagline is like the hero of the story is destined to become like the villain. Like that's his like little prophecy or something. And that just sounded really interesting to me. So, but this does not have an audiobook and it's really long. So I don't know about this though. So one of my goals this year is to read, I have a ton of adult fantasy on my TBR that doesn't have audiobooks and that I'm very intimidated by. Uh, and I have been doing pretty well. Uh, I read, why am I looking behind me? Like it's there. I, I read Jade City. I read The Dragon Republic. I've been reading some Michael J. Sullivan. I'm feeling really good about that challenge. So maybe I'll continue uh, with this, but let me, let's see what the last book is first and we'll pick our three. Okay, and the last one's 97. Again, that's definitely gonna be downstairs. Oh, that's a sequel. But we can't do that because I haven't read the first one. So let's pick a different one. 45 is, that'll be up here. Oh, you know what? I think we have to do this one because this one's on my self-destruct TBR. It is <laughs> The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I put this on there because this also doesn't have an audiobook. It's ginormous and... I really want to read this whole series this year and you know and I've heard it's best to like binge it because there's a lot going on and you want to like remember everything but that is a lot <laughs> but I think I have to pick this one so I think I'm gonna just gonna indefinitely extend this video but that's okay uh so we're gonna pick this one I'm gonna put this one back because we're not doing two genre normal fantasy books that's not happening i think i'll definitely do this one since it's so short and do i want to do god killer or that rom commy one i think i want to do god killer i just read a rom com so i'm not really in the mood for that right now i think i want to do god killer so this is the tbr we're doing it i was about to say if something happens and i don't feel like reading this one i'll read the rom com but no we're going to do it. Um, we're going to read this and it's going to happen. I, it w I will probably read these two first. I'll be honest with you, but this is going to happen. I'm going to make this a priority. Um, so wish me luck. Okay. I'll check in when, probably just when I finish one of these, it won't be this one first. I guarantee you that it'll probably be this one. Anyway, check in later. Bye. Okay. <laughs> So I actually filmed the intro to this like just a couple hours ago and I was like, you know what? I've not spent any time in my library reading it because technically it's not complete. Like the bookshelves are complete, but there's no furniture in here. Like I'm on a bean bag. There's no, like we want to get like a couch and like a chair, or, you know, some stuff to like sit in, but furniture is expensive. So we haven't gotten there yet. But I was like, you know what? I have this bean bag. Oh, these are all stuffed animals. I'm gonna eventually free them when I have like a couch and a chair and stuff to have them hang. I'm gonna make like a squishy corner over here is my intention for now. I guess I could take them out, but I was gonna wait till I had a couch or something just so they're, I don't have to like move them every time. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, I have a shadow of what once was lost down here. Cause I was like, you know what? If we're gonna read this, we gotta go for it. We gotta start it because this is gonna take me a hot second. I'm also reading Jade Legacy. No, that's the third one. Jade War. I'm reading that on my phone and from Libby and that is due in like, uh, like not a lot of time, like maybe 12 days or something. And I'm only, let's see, like the little audio, the audio book, the little book on my phone is like 800 pages and I'm on page like 100. So I'm only an eighth of the way through. So I think it's 5 p.m. 
My husband and I are going out to dinner on a little date night, I, I guess in the next couple hours. So I'm just gonna, and he's playing video games with his friend right now. So I'm just gonna chill down here, enjoy my new room. Was that him? Did y'all hear that? I left the basement door open. I guess something happened in his game is he's upset. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna enjoy my, enjoy my bookshelf, sit here and read until we're, till he's done. I think that sounds like a great Sunday evening, if you ask me. So I guess I'll check in. I'm sure I won't read that many pages, but I was going to maybe alternate between Jade War and this guy and just see how much I read. Yeah. All right. Peace. Hello. Morphe's here too. I, of course he is. Join me in bed. Yes, we don't have a bed frame. It's fine. We got a new mattress and we haven't got the frame yet, but that's okay. Um, I'm here. This is actually great because it's only been a couple days since I filmed this intro and I've already finished the last book party. Not that this is a huge accomplishment. The audiobook was available and this is super short. It's less than 300 pages and the audiobook was six hours, and I listened on double speed, so it was three hours. So I'm sure none of you have heard of this. Um, this is just, this is a book my grandmother gave me, recommended to me. I think this is technically her copy, and she just gifted it to me, passed it along. She is a huge reader like me. She mostly, or not mostly, she almost exclusively reads literary fiction, and I like all genres, and I feel like not, literally fiction isn't usually my favorite, but I do enjoy it, you know, when a book is good. Uh, and I feel like her recommendations to me are, like, almost always successful. Like, sometimes I'll have a book she recommends me that I rate, like, three stars. But, for example, like, she recommended me The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett, which is, like, one of my favorite books ever. She recommended me to me Leanne Moriarty, Lessons in Chemistry, like... Um, let me see if I can think of any more. If I think of anything else, I'll put them on the screen of ones that have been successes. But usually, I really like the books that she recommends me. You can probably tell where this is going. I did not like this at all. Uh, this is going to be a two star. Uh, I'm disappointed. The premise, I wasn't like super intrigued by or anything. But when I did start, and this only took me like two days to read, like, again, super short audiobook. Where Our House is is like 30 minutes from town. So this was literally like two trips. and I finished it, basically. Anyway, the synopsis wasn't like super intriguing to me. But I don't know. Again, usually the book she recommends me I like. And I get why she recommended this to me because it's about this woman named Eve. She's my age. Uh, she's 25. And she is working for this author as an assistant. She, like, wants to be a writer and she's an editor and all this stuff. So I'm like, okay, I can see where she was like, Claire would like this because Claire's a writer. You know, the girl is her age. She likes publishing, etc. But that's not really what this book is about at all. Like, the synopsis kind of leads you to believe it's this coming of age story about Eve and, like, her summer in... It's like Cape Cod or something and like writing and stuff. And that isn't really what this is at all. It's not really coming of age. I don't feel like Eve learns anything. Basically, the entire book is her having an affair with her boss. That's the whole book. That is a spoiler because that's not in the synopsis. But that's basically the whole book is her having an affair with her boss. And her attitude about it. It just really didn't sit right with me. I just really did not like Eve. Like, she's... So, okay. I'm just going to spoil the whole thing. So, she's working for this guy who lives in Cape Cod. He's an author, like, of... Uh, I think he technically writes articles for the most part. I don't think he's a novelist. He's, like, this famous article writer, whatever. But he's writing a memoir. And that she's, like, helping his... He's She's, like, his research assistant and is, like, in his house. But at the beginning of the book... And the reason she knows him is because she used to work for the publisher that's publishing the memoir. Okay. So at the beginning of the book, she goes to this party and sleeps with his son. 
And that's a whole thing. And I liked that part. Like the very beginning of this book where she meets Franny is the son and uh, like sleeps with him and like they're forming a relationship. I was like, oh, like I like this. This is going to be good. And then, you know, like that ends. Franny leaves. You learn that Franny has a girlfriend. Uh, and she's like, listen, I know it's not her fault. She didn't know he had a girlfriend. That's on him. But like the whole rest of the book, she's just like weirdly jealous of the girlfriend and like thinking about the son. And then she sleeps with his married father for the rest of the freaking book. And obviously he's culpable in that as well. But again, her attitude about it all was just so weird to me. It's just weird. I, like she doesn't feel guilty at all. She is almost like vindictive. That's the word I'm looking for. She's almost like vindictive about it. I'm like, why am I rooting for you? There's a third... <clears throat> Third romantic interest, which I don't understand because Eve is not that interesting. I really don't get it. And, like, I I wish the whole book, Jeremy is this other guy, wish the whole book would have been about the two of them because their relationship was kind of interesting. And then at the end, like, they're not even together. Like, she, like, yells at him because she accuses him of plagiarizing his novel that's coming out. And then, like, that's the end of the book. And I'm like, what was the point? Like, what did I gain from this? What did I take away from this? Why was this written? What was like the pitch? Like, I really, I'm just at a loss of what this was. So that's disappointing <laughs> that I did not like this at all. Um, and the Goodreads rating is really low. It's like a 3.3 or something. So I'm not alone, clearly. Okay, but that is my unfortunate update. So we still have, I actually have another update. Let me move. I have a stack of books on my bedside table. What reading girl does it? You know, so my other update is on the shadow of what was lost. I am like 30 pages in. That looks so pathetic. Uh, I did finish Jade War though, which was really good. That was like a four star, 4.5 on page 40. Um, definitely intrigued. I just got to read this a little bit at a time. And then God Killer, I has like a 10-week wait on Libby, so I'll get to that when I get to it. Maybe by the time I get God Killer, I will have finished this. It's so long. So, yeah, there's my update. Uh, check in five months from now when I finish that book. So, okay. Bye. Hello everyone, apologies for my messy hair. I just tried to fix my part and it didn't really work. So we're just gonna go with it. If I'm distracted in this clip, it's because my cat is down here. Uh, it's a mess in here, I apologize. Uh, he's never been down here before and I thought it'd be fun to hang out, but he's been going a little crazy, which is fair. He's been exploring. We'd probably have to go back upstairs soon though because he's. I think he's getting a little store crazy. Uh, but I'm like three quarters of the way through God Killer. I was gonna try and like finish it down here, read down here and finish it, but that's not happening. I've been distracted by my cat. His name's Bear, by the way. I don't think I've shown him on YouTube yet. We got him two months ago. Uh, anyway, so most of the way through this, I'm not thriving. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm not really thriving. It's okay. So I started this on, I was on vacation last week. I started this on vacation over audio. I've been mostly listening on audio and at first I didn't understand a goddamn thing. And to be fair, I think that was partially my fault because when sometimes when I'm listening on audio, you don't like comprehend. Like if you're, like for me especially, I need to like be fully paying attention. Like I need to be doing nothing else, like a very mindless phone game, driving. Like I can't be like on a walk. I can't be like, I don't, I don't know what's a good example I can't be like focusing on something else, like even like sewing or something. Not that I sew, but for an example, that I feel like that kind of requires some thinking. I can't be like, obviously driving requires thinking, but you know what I mean? I can't be like multitasking. I'm a very bad multitasker. But even so, sometimes when I'm listening on audio, I zone out a little bit. And with like a contemporary book, that's fine because like I can... I can zone out a little bit and because everything is like simple and in our world, I, I comprehend everything. But in a, you know, adult fantasy like this, I was, I was missing stuff. I was confused. So that's on me. I think some of it is the writing. I'm not really 
loving the writing. I'm bored. I, I think it's not that the characters aren't well fleshed out because I think they are. It's just the way we have four character perspectives and I keep getting confused about whose chapter we're in. Again, it's not like they're not distinctive. I do like the characters, but when we're in their heads, I just can't tell who it is. Anyway, the plot is basically that this god killer is helping this little girl get to this like city because Inara, that's the little girl, ha is like, oh, bless you, is connected to a god. And in this world, there was this war and like humans versus gods. It's kind of vague. They don't tell you a whole lot. Uh, and But what I'm picking up is there is this war gods were on like they were kind of helping out humans and then they all were on like the bad side of the war oh my husband's calling me let me finish this up later when i'm not distracted hello it's a completely different day <laughs> oops but i'm here and moments ago i actually finished god killer uh, i know i was in the middle of talking about it yesterday and i really wanted to finish it last night but i fell asleep before I could finish it. So I finished it, now it's done. I forget exactly what I was talking about yesterday, but I'm just gonna, I think I was talking about what this book is about. So I'm just gonna go over that really quickly right now. I mentioned, you know, the God Killer, the little girl who has like the God connected to her and the God Killer and Inara, the little girl, are like going to this city to try and help that situation. And then there's also this knight or he's like a retired knight named Elo, and he is also going to this like city to try and get a curse off of the king he used to serve. So that's kind of the plot. There's like other stuff going on, but something I didn't love is the world building was pretty confusing to me. Uh, it was very vague. Like I wish there was more like concrete stuff going on. I like. There's all of this mention of this war that happened that like between gods and humans and like we're in the aftermath of that war. And I kind of wish this book had taken place like during the war, if that makes sense. I just feel like it wasn't as exciting. The, the spot we're at in the book, in, in the plot, it just wasn't exciting to me. The plot wasn't exciting. The whole book is just them like journeying to the city or this like abandoned town because in the war it used to be like full of gods I guess and there was this huge battle there and now it's like abandoned but like still being guarded by knights that was also confusing but like the whole book we're just journeying there and usually I'm like down for a journey and I did like the part of this book I did enjoy is I liked the characters I liked their relationship with like the three of them and the relationship they formed well and the god too but I'll get to that in a second the relationship they formed with one another and the connection they made like I enjoyed all that it wasn't like my favorite ever I I love found family and like friendship relationship character connection that's my favorite thing about books and it wasn't my favorite ever but I thought it was good I thought it was well done I liked the characters I didn't love them but I liked them but the the journey they went on was just not very exciting to me uh and I don't know I feel like if they'd have like I don't know I feel like if they'd had maybe one or two more characters on their journey like if they had another god with them like I didn't love the gods I think maybe that's what I'm trying to get to um the gods are presented as these like cr creatures that are very morally not even morally gray just kind of like out for their own interests and like that's just in their nature kind of like fae they're kind of like fae and I didn't love that I kind of wanted them to have a more mythological uh, mythology to them. And they were just kind of all mean assholes. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously like the Greek gods are all assholes, but there's like this like ancient presence to them and they're not all bad. So it makes them interesting. And I felt like all these bitches were just mean. And, and anyway, let me talk about there. It says in the back that there, you know, this noble girl has a god bonded to her and we meet this god and he's presented as like a little rabbit creature with antlers and i was like oh my gosh this is gonna be so cute he was the most annoying bitch in this book and i'm i'm mad 
I won't go into spoilers about that. I'll write a Goodreads review and I'll put spoilers in there. But there's something that happens with him um, that I just could not forgive. And like all the characters were like, oh, it's fine. And like moved past it and like had this connection with this god. And I was like, he sucks though. Like, I don't understand why we're supposed to like him now after this thing that happens. So that was just frustrating. Yeah, I think I'm going to give it a three star. I, I was toying around with giving it like a two. Maybe it's a 2.5. It's definitely not a two because I did enjoy the characters. But I just feel like this book wasn't all that exciting. Like, I just wanted more, if that makes any sense. Like, the plot is basically them just, like, fighting these shadow demons, like, four times. And then they get to the town and there's, like, a a, a battle. Or, like, a fight, fight sequence. And, like, that's the end. I think, like, again, I don't want to spoil it. But I feel like if the king had been the one on this journey instead of the knight, I mean, obviously I know that changes a few things that happen in the story, but I think that could have been really interesting. I also just didn't quite, I, I didn't quite believe this world where like gods are outlawed, but like all these people are still believing in gods. Like I, I just wanted to dive more into that because it didn't seem plausible to me. Yeah, that's all I got. I don't know. I'm not totally satisfied with, by this one and I'm disappointed because I asked for this for Christmas and my parents got it for me for um, $20. Why is this tiny little paperback $20? So that's disappointing. I, I think I'm going to look up what the sequel is about, but honestly, this, I mean, it didn't wrap up all the, it, I can't say it wrapped up. I mean, like, there's a lot that still needs to happen, but the ending's fine. Like, I feel like I'd be satisfied not continuing. So unless the sequel sounds, like, amazing, I'll probably get to drop the series right here. So that's that, unfortunately. What was the other book I read for this video? I already can't remember. Oh, no! It was that other one I didn't like. Shoot. It was that one about the girl who slept with that old man. I'm not doing well, but good news, actually, because I'm sure you did not have faith in me as I did not have faith in myself, but I have been reading The Shadow of What Was Lost by James Islington. I read a ton of this on my vacation. I didn't bring this with me, but I got a ebook version, and I think that really helped me, actually, because... It made it a lot more attainable and less intimidating when you're just like scrolling on your phone and reading or swiping on your phone versus like picking this up. But yeah, look, I am over halfway through. I'm on page 385. I think there's like 700 pages. Yeah. So a tiny bit over halfway. This, I don't think I've explained what this is about and it is quite hard to explain. There is a lot going on here the best i can kind of come up with is it's very classic fantasy like on the front it says love wheel of time this is about to become your new favorite series and though i have not read the wheel of time i like totally get that comparison because this feels like it was written like in the 90s if that makes sense and that's not like a diss like that's just the type of fantasy it is very like we're just out here on a journey kind of like this one but this is a lot more intriguing to me because there it is interesting because I feel like there's a lot of similarities between these two like this book is very vague in its world building this book is also very vague in its world building but I just feel like maybe because this is so long I'm getting so much more information and like interesting things are being like thrown in and there's like reveals in this book like we've had reveals, we've had like interesting plot points that like I know we're going to come back and I need to like remember. I'm like, ooh, like this happened. That was weird. Why is that going on? I need to re remember that. But I will say like the first hundred or so pages, I was feeling very similarly with these two. Like I was bored. I was like, what are we doing? I don't understand anything because this book definitely doesn't hold your hand. Like you were just in it and you were just confused with everybody here and like, Character motivations are like, you'd think somebody is doing this, but no, they're actually doing that. And you're like, I can't keep track of all this. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. This is basically about this kid. I don't, I think he's like 16. This teenager named Davian. And he is this 
There, in this world, there's people called gifted and they can use energy and like use magic. That's all, I'm, that's basically the best way to describe it. And the people in charge are like, there was, have like these rules in place so that the magic users like can't go out of control, but they're very strict. So like they have to stay in these schools and have like, if they leave the schools, they have to have like these cuffs on that like block the magic. There's a lot of prejudice going around, right? So like the, I don't think there's like a king. It's a little confusing, but the guy in charge um, basically hates the people with magic. And, and that's kind of what's happening. So Davian thinks he's a guy with magic, but he's actually this different type of a, of a guy with magic. I'm doing such a bad job explaining this. Basically like way back in the day, there were these people that could like see the future uh, and they got it wrong. And then like everybody died, like something happened and like it was bad. So that's why all this is in place that like, it's like, oh, we don't trust you bitches anymore. So we're gonna like really limit you and like keep you in these schools and like put the cuffs on you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they think that all these people that can tell the future are dead. Like if the people who can use magic are like really prejudiced against, like the people who can see the future are like super duper, like they think they're, I think they're, they think they're dead. Yeah, okay, it says on the back. It says that they're all dead. But we learn that the main character, Davian, can see the future. He's like, I don't, well, he, he, oh my God, I'm doing such a bad job. They can't only see the future. There's like other shit they can do. But he basically realizes that he's one of these like top tier magician people. It basically goes from there. I feel like I've already made it a convoluted mess. But, you know, we're following him. Uh, they, he basically has to leave his school. And because he's told that, you know, if you want to find out who you are, like, also, there's all these attacks happening up north. He's basically, like, recruited to go do, deal with that. Uh, I don't really know what's happening there, so I can't really explain that. I, I am kind of confused. I'm like, I feel like you being on the road is, like, the motivation isn't super strong there. But, so I don't really get that either. But they're journeying. We're on a journey. And on this journey, you know, like, his best friend goes with him. Uh, and there's like, we're figuring out stuff about the best friend. We're figuring stuff that they meet this other guy along the way who has amnesia. And we're figuring out about that guy. We're figuring out about like the, there's like a grown man who's like the Aragorn character, if you will. He's kind of like helping them along, figuring out about that guy. They left a girl that they, I'm assuming that's her, a girl was with them at the school and who's left behind and she's doing her own thing so i'm now that i'm really into it and like understanding it a bit more i i i'm enjoying it I, i'm very intrigued also i know i explained that so badly and i know reagan from Prue's project is reading this right now by the time i post this she's that vlog that she made is probably super old but i'm gonna leave her thing below because i guarantee she explained this better than I did. I haven't watched the video. I just saw that she posted it. But I guarantee, because I didn't want to watch it and, like, spoil myself. I, I, she usually doesn't do, doesn't do spoilers. But anyway, I guarantee she explained it. She's much better at that than I am. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I'm definitely intrigued. I, I have literally no clue where it's going at all. But this is good that I'm liking it because I've clearly had some L's in this video. I am going to... Slowly, I, I'm not making this a huge priority right now. I think I'm just gonna try and read it when I can. I'm gonna, I think I might stick to reading it on my phone because that really worked out for me on vacation. I read like 200 pages of this and it, it didn't feel like that. So yeah, anyway, this is a lengthy update, but the last update will be, you'll be getting is when I finish this guy. This is hard to talk about because there's so much going on and there's really not, not a lot on the back at all. So I don't, I really don't want to say more than what I have. And do I un even understand it myself? I don't know. But that's the update. Uh, I'll check in with you when I finish this and we can wrap this whole thing up. So yeah, bye. Hello everybody. Um, <laughs> join me, I thought it'd be fun to film this in the library. Uh, sorry if I look a little crazy. I. Worked out this morning and then cleaned my house. So, 
I haven't showered yet because I was like, why shower if I'm just gonna sweat cleaning my house? And I did. But you may be wondering if you were so sweaty, why do you have a blanket? The basement is cold. Also, enjoy this Walmart NASCAR shirt. Anyway, that's not why you're here. You're here because I finally finished the shadow of what was lost by James Islington. Wow. Um, this is a long time coming. This video is a long time coming. I'm hoping to edit it this week and post it. So look forward to that whenever this goes up. Um, but we're ending the video with a success because this is a, far, a, a four star read. It's not quite a five star because I'm not like totally completely connected to it and it's not like a new favorite but I'm definitely invested. I so much happened in this book so much. I have I even no I, I do remember I think I went over what this was about in my last time updating. This took me like two months to read which is not like abnormal for me. I like book hop all the time. I'm a mood reader to my core. I really have a hard time sticking to like a specific book I have to read for something, which is why these take so long, but that's why these are also good. So I actually read what's on my TBR. And this was a huge goal of mine this year to read, to read the whole trilogy, but I'm, I'm just gonna try and read book two by the end of the year because it's already June. So, and we've only read the first one. So I'm, I'm thinking in like fall to try and read the second one because it's even longer than this one. They're so large. On Goodreads, this one says it's 600 pages. It is not, it is 700. And it's, it, I'm sure, and the second one's even longer. So anyway, my thoughts. So overall, I really enjoyed this. I, honestly, my favorite part was the plot. I feel like there was a lot of like really interesting things going on. I do like the characters. I'm not totally hooked on them. They were kind of annoying at various different points. I'm hoping they're, the main characters are all pretty young in this book. I'm hoping they age a little bit in the second and third one and aren't quite as like, I don't know, sometimes the decisions, especially Davian would be baking. I was like, dude, uh, shut up, stop. But overall, really enjoyed. My only other criticism is, you know, all those memes like when you're reading the first hundred pages of a fantasy book and it's all like gibberish and you don't understand what's happening. Um, but then like it all clicks, you know, once you're further into the book and you're like, oh yeah, I totally understand everything about this magic system, about this world, blah, blah, blah. Never happened. I, I could not explain a single iota of this world to you in any capacity. I, I mean, you saw me in the last cl clip struggling to even like give you the premise of this. I think part of it's my own fault because I took such long breaks. Like, I read a lot of this in like March and April and then took a break for a month and then picked it up last weekend to finish it. So, or this past weekend. So that didn't help obviously, but even so, like even if I read it all in a row, I really don't think I would have comprehended some of the stuff. There's just too many names for different things. There's too many specific rules of the magic system that contradict each other and that are slightly different but not like I just couldn't grasp it maybe I'm dumb but I like to think I'm a pretty good fantasy reader or read a lot of fantasy and I just I just couldn't I couldn't get it I, I just at a point I just accepted that it was kind of gonna be gibberish and I just focused on the plot so that's what I did I I definitely could tell you like the plot of things but the magic system in the world, I, I have no idea. Like looking at this map, I really, I, like I could not tell you anything. Like I, tr I don't know. But I'm glad that this video made me finally pick this up. It's also my self-destruct TBR, which I'm doing terrible at. So that was really good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of myself. So I hope you enjoyed this video. The other one should be coming soon. I'm doing two right now, and I'm about to film the intro to another one, if you recognize this hair and outfit. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like I'm on a roll. You know, we're doing good. So anyway, have a good one. See you later. Bye.